What's up guys, you're watching Poots Garage. This week, we got a whole bunch of random things to take care of. We're gonna be working on the truck here. I got a little something to do on the Corvette back there, but uh, we're gonna take care of some major leaks that happened on the our first test drive, so we can hopefully fix that up, and then uh, maybe we can test drive it again soon. All right, we gotta work on the Chevy now. Uh, this thing leaks oil, like a ton of oil. So we gotta get that stopped so that I can start driving this thing around. If you remember really early on in this build, uh, I actually built my own oil cooler lines and the lines came out pretty good, came out real nice. But the fittings that I had to modify and weld up myself are all leaking. And uh, I don't know if it's my weld that's leaking or if it's just the fact that I can't really get any tools in there to tighten them down very tight just because it's too too small of an area in there to get wrenches and stuff in there. So I've decided just to get rid of the oil cooler and all that stuff, get rid of the lines, the oil cooler and all that. We'll just get rid of it all for now and then uh, I'll play with it later if I want to figure out if I really need an oil cooler or not. But I don't think I do, but I got some parts on the table that'll help us delete that. Hey, before we get too deep into this video, we got to head over to the map. All right, we're at the map. So what we do on this channel is you comment where you're watching from and I'll put a red pin on the map. This week, I got 18 locations, so let's get it on. First up is Billings, Montana. Then Sarasota, Florida. The whole country of Israel. Germantown, Tennessee. Kamala, Phuket, Thailand. Shelbyville, Indiana. Blair, Nebraska. Kenai, Alaska. Bloomfield, New Jersey. Cortez, Colorado. Belton, Missouri. Ridgeway, Wisconsin. Portage La Prairie, Manitoba, Canada. Atlin, British Columbia, Canada. Townsend, Vermont. San Antonio, Texas. Greenville, Michigan. And last is Weedsport, New York. All right, that's all the pins for this week. So uh, keep calling out them cities, them states, them countries, whatever you want to represent. And I also still have stickers available. If you would like a sticker, I give these out for free. All you gotta do is send me your address to pootsgarage at gmail.com. That address will be in the description of the video. Now, as far as I know, all these 454s came with oil coolers on them, on the square bodies, on the 90s, up until the, till they were done building 454s, they were putting oil coolers on them because they were used for heavy duty applications and they were trying to keep the oil cool on them. Now this truck, yeah, it's gonna be wheeled and whatnot, pretty heavy duty, but it's not gonna be put under like super heavy loads for extended periods of time. I'm not gonna be towing with it. I'm not gonna be, I don't know, it's not gonna be used as a work truck or anything like that. It's just gonna be a toy. So I'm gonna get rid of the oil cooler for now. And if I ever have issues later, I'll save all my parts and try to make it work and maybe just get the correct fittings and stuff like that. So I don't have to use my modified ones. Now to get rid of that cooler, all we need is a new adapter for the oil filter. This uses a pancake style adapter that goes between the engine block and the oil filter and then the two lines come off of that so we got to get rid of that pancake adapter and then install just a normal oil filter adapter and that's all this is it's just a little guy I'm gonna screw that up under the block and then it'll use the surface that's already on the block to seal the filter pretty basic the summit kit I got the summit looks like the uh, part number is SSL dash FA 350 as far as I know, they're all the same for small blocks and big blocks, so we're about to find out. I'm not positive on this, to be honest. This kit here, the Summit kit, also comes with new bolts, and they're actually ARP bolts, which is really nice. So next, let's get all that stuff off the truck. Figured I better at least look at it to see where exactly the leak's coming from, but it definitely looks like it's coming from one of my welds, so... Oh well, we're gonna take it all off and not worry about it for now. Uh, yeah, let's get under there. So you could definitely tell it was coming from this upper area here, on this upper fitting, right where I welded it. Uh, all this residual is from when I drove it the last time and it kind of just went everywhere. But you can see just that, you know, minute that I was letting it run there, it leaks quite a bit, so I want to take care of that.
here's the adapter and the lines off of the vehicle now you can see uh, I believe it was this fitting here that seemed like it was leaking somewhere uh, I'm, I'm not too worried about it oh no upper one this one I'm not worried about it right now it's off it's done uh, this is what we were working with and this is what we got now uh, I already put the new adapter on, put the new bolts in, there's a new gasket up there that I already had, so it all worked out perfect. So you can see now, my oil filter will just spin right on, right there. It's actually going to be up higher out of the way, so it'll be a little further away from these headers, so that alone uh, might help the oil cooling. <laughs> and there we go, we're all done. Oil cooler has been deleted. Less stuff under here is always nice. And I can't believe how far away that oil filter is from the headers now. That's actually uh, kind of crazy. Before it was way down here all up in this stuff. You know, that adapter was four inches deep and it was way down here. So that was actually like a heater right there on the oil. So now moving it away, it's like, I wonder how much that oil cooler was really doing. Was it just offsetting how close the filter was to the headers, you know? And now I'm further away. It's probably going to run the same as far as I'm concerned. Not to mention we now have more airflow going straight to the radiator, which is always a good thing because that cooler sat and went all the way here from top to bottom, covered this whole side. So now I got a nice straight shot into the radiator there. And you can't forget the weather report. We've had some crazy weather this weekend. Uh, everything from sunny 70s to just rain and thunderstorms, and it's been pretty wild. So, uh, check out a couple clips here. talk about something so I had a company that actually reached out to me to do a product review and uh, it's a well-known company it's Vivor 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 I don't know how to say it but uh you know it's a it's a cheap tool and equipment type company they make a little bit of everything it's kind of like Harbor Freight in a way to me kind of like the Harbor Freight of uh, Amazon you know but they actually reached out to me and they actually sent me a product so don't get discouraged if you see me doing these type of things. I'm going to try and keep products that are a little more related to what we do here and stuff like that. But hey, if I got to do something a little off the wall once in a while to keep this channel going, then, uh, you know, help me out and just keep watching. Now, I'm not getting paid to do this, nor am I getting any uh, kickbacks from, you know, sales or anything like that. But it's kind of nice to be able to expand my horizons a little bit. And they are sending me this stuff. So, you know, it's kind of free of charge for me. So... It's kind of interesting, it's kind of fun in a way to, you know, try and figure out how to incorporate this type of stuff. So, so please support me in the channel and uh, just keep watching. Now I'm going to do just a very quick summarized uh, kind of review type deal, I think, right on this channel, like here in a minute. I will do a more in-depth review on a separate video, so make sure you watch that too. Thank you. Today, we get to do something a little bit different. Now, unfortunately, there was a uh, mix-up on the uh, ordering of this, so... I can't do a full review, but I can do an unboxing, and I'll tell you why here in a second. So what we have here is actually an SUV tent. This is the type of tent that actually sets up behind your SUV or hatchback or pickup truck with a camper shell, and it actually attaches to the back of your vehicle. So you can kind of use your vehicle as a, you know part of your tent camping experience and whatnot. But I don't own an SUV or any other kind of vehicle like that that I can actually use this on. So what happened was I was actually supposed to get a pickup bed type tent, one that actually goes in the bed of the truck. But there was a mix up on the ordering and maybe miscommunication or something. And I ended up getting this. So I contacted them. They said, well, go ahead and just do an unboxing video. So that's all we can do right now. But this is going to be completely honest. This is going to be an honest review. I'm not going to put my name behind something I don't like. So you will see my honest reactions here as I unbox this thing. I've only opened it to pull out the instruction manual just to verify that it was the uh, wrong tent and whatnot. But I haven't actually opened it or unboxed it or anything like that yet. And that's it. Uh, 
it's not the easiest tent to get up by yourself. If you had another hand, it would help a lot. But uh, I feel like it's one that you kind of got to learn a couple little quirks and stuff, and then it'll probably go up super quick. But I was able to get it up by myself. Uh, if you put up tents before with poles like this, then they're all pretty much the same. So this is it. Uh, it's not too bad, to be honest. This is the side that actually attaches to your vehicle. So you would grab that, and that will go over the end of your vehicle. And it's got like a, uh, a stretchy cord material inside there, so it kind of really wraps around and should hold on to multiple types of vehicles. There is a separate, what oh, they call this, a rain fly that goes over the whole top of the thing to give it a, another layer of protection. So uh, we'll throw that on here in a second. I just wanted to show it as it is right now. You can see it has that nice waterproof bottom material that tents like to have and we got a window that's got the screen I rolled down the the closed part just so you can show how it holds up this is the side that goes to the SUV and then it actually has a door on each side I'm standing in one door and that's the other door that's kind of nice it's a very wide open tent it's got a lot of airflow and you can close it all off completely with solid doors but you can see this is the mesh material and the door I'm standing in. And then it has the separate solid door that you zip up also. Height wise is not bad. I'm 6'2 or 6'3 somewhere around there and I can stand up in this thing. That's always my complaint with tents. Well, we got it all set up as far as we can. Actually, I think I might actually have a vehicle that this may work on it. We're gonna have to try. It's, it's kind of a hatchback. Think I can make it work? Well, it almost works. <laughs> you know, we got some little, some gaps here that would uh, stay open and, and whatnot, but at least when you're sleeping, you got a cool view. So all in all, I'm kind of impressed. It's not a bad tent, I can tell you that much. The quality is similar to other tents you would buy in this price range. I don't think there's gonna be any major disappointments as far how well it fits on different types of vehicles. I can't really tell you that much. It almost fits a Corvette. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's that's what we got. And uh, if I was looking for this type of tent, I would I would consider this. We're gonna do a little bit of work on the Corvette here. Uh, we left off the last video. I pulled that window regulator apart and then put it back together because I didn't have parts. Well, this week I got parts. So I'm gonna try and keep this real simple so I don't bore you guys to death on doing window regulators because I know it's not the most exciting stuff, but a lot of people are out there looking for this type of information. So I'll try to give you the basics. Now I ordered this one off Zip Corvettes. It seems like a pretty decent company. They seem to have tons of parts for these things. So they seem like a good resource to be able to get all these little weird parts that you might need on in these cars because these cars are not the most reliable. Here's our part numbers and everything if you're really curious. This seems like a pretty good part uh, quality wise and whatnot so I'll show it to you here what we got. A little instruction manual that's pretty generic but that's it. Uh, I think we'll uh, get this in and out fairly quick and easy. And if you're with me on the last video you'll know that uh, my window regulator is being replaced because it sounds really bad in there. It's like real crunchy sounding going up and down and I'm afraid that a cable's gonna break or something's gonna finally let loose and I've actually noticed just the last couple times I've driven it since the last video that this window actually stops when it's going up or down like midway I kind of have to go back and forth to get it to get past a tough spot in there so it is definitely failing hard right now so I can't wait to get this thing replaced so that I can uh, drive this thing a little more reliably
Well, that came apart really easy. I was kind of surprised, so very good. <laughs> There's one hidden bolt on this uh, front location on straight up underneath. It's underneath that rubber plug, but that was easy for me to find. Uh, you just got to look at the uh, new regulator to see where all your studs are. So let's take a look at uh, what we got. So this is the uh, old regulator here. Nothing really looks out of place on this. Like, I don't know why it's failing and whatnot. Maybe it's the motor itself. And then that's our new regulator there. It's all fresh and clean and ready to go. The only thing I notice is that these plastic pieces are shot way out. I don't know if that's normal because these ones stay nice and compressed. But other than that, that's the only thing I can think of that might have, might be failing and it's catching on the springs and rubbing the cables wrong and stuff in there. But other than that, I don't know. We're just going to throw this new one in and uh, see how it goes. There is a lot of adjustment to these, which is surprising. Like, you know, things like this stud here can be adjusted in and out. and The window itself can be adjusted up and down on the clamp a little bit. You know, you got an adjuster there. So hopefully I don't have to mess with it too much. Yeah, we are back together. Well, I haven't put the door panel back on, but uh, yeah, I was just going through and adjusting the window. I was trying to get it up just a little bit more so that these seals fit a little bit tighter, especially along the top here. And I think I leak through here. I'm only on the, actually on the other side. The seals are in real bad shape on this, but uh, yeah, I think we got it pretty good. It looks like it's sealing decently all the way through. I could probably try to bring it in a little tighter, but I think it'll work good. We'll just have to test drive it, make sure we don't have no weird wind noises or anything like that. And this is the inside, obviously. It's a mess. So the adjusters I'm doing, they're they're kind of buried in there. It's that green thing in there. There's a little uh, adjuster on the bottom of that. And there's also one up front here that you really have to reach all the way up behind and get your ratchet on and, and turn it. But it raises the window up just a little bit. Makes it fit a little tighter. And uh, I think we're good here. So I'm just going to throw this door panel back on and Call it good. Also gonna remember to put this little sound deadening deal on here. This is, I took this off last time, I forgot to put it back on, so just make sure it goes back on this time. regulator apart real quick and see if I can find out where all that previous noise is coming from. Obviously this is the old unit. Looks pretty easy to take apart so I said why not. I don't get a taste full of spring and anything. Jeez. 
So I think I can see where the problem is. So notice this one has a big blue piece on it. I think what happened is this one, just gonna fly apart on me, boing. This one's broken. It's supposed to be attached to there and it broke apart. So maybe my noise was just it rubbing on everything in there. Kind of nasty. Uh, I don't see any like frayed cables though, like where it was making all the actual noise from, but uh, oh, that's, uh, that's about all I can see. But it was definitely wore out and uh, needed to be replaced. So that's what we did. I wouldn't be surprised if there is a cable somewhere in here that's just in, you know, really bad shape. But pulling all this stuff apart, I don't see nothing. Next up on the list is to take care of these rear axle seals. I know I've mentioned it a couple times, but they're just leaking, just sitting there. I had a huge puddle under each wheel. Uh, one side I pulled apart on accident. Uh, I put it on backwards, so I actually pulled the seal back out, which probably damaged it, which is why that side's probably leaking worse. <laughs> but the other side leaks also, so we gotta take care of this. I can't have these things leaking all over my brakes and everything like that. So we have already got one side pulled apart, as you can see. I've done this before. I'm not going to bore you guys with this type of video, so we're just going to show you the highlights as we go. So you can see I had to pull everything back off, pulled the uh, brakes off and everything. And you can see like this big rusty spot here is really bad. That's right where the seal rides, I believe. And then it kind of continues all the way around. So this was the real bad side. And this is the seal that we have pulled off. Uh, just pulled this off the truck as it sits here. Doesn't look horrible, but you can tell the seal is just drenched in there, so it's not holding anything back. And after the first time that I did these uh, seals and hubs and everything, um, thanks to my buddy Adam, he sent me the correct uh, sockets for these uh, nuts. So I actually got to use that, so that's pretty cool. And you can see what that gear oil is already doing on the brakes, and I've only driven this thing around the block once, so I'll have to go through and really clean this stuff back off. I'll clean out the pads and everything real good too, make sure it's all good to go. And since this is a very common issue on these, uh, I guess, full float uh, 14 bolt axles, I actually have some upgraded seals. I got these off, I believe it was off-road design, they sell these, and this is actually a two-piece seal. So where this one is a one-piece seal, and that lip rides directly on the spindle on the truck, this one, the center section here, will actually stay on the spindle, and the sealing surface is actually in between. And then it has a nice thick rubber seal here to go over all that rust and stuff. These are advertised to fix your oil leaks no matter how rusty your spindle is on the truck. There's a little part number from them if you're curious. All right, and just like that, we're back together. I uh, got this thing all figured out and put back in. Uh, I just didn't feel like doing videos for this part, you know, we've done this all before already, so it was kind of nice just to work, not have the cameras going, not have to set up camera and lighting and all that stuff, just just get it done, you know, it was, it was kind of enjoyable. Now for Lucky, once I uh, drive this thing around a little bit, I'll look under here and I won't see any oil dripping. And just to recap, I haven't actually even started it yet since doing this uh, front deal up here, getting that uh, oil leak fixed on the motor. But I'm kind of running out of time for this weekend, so uh, I gotta start editing some videos up and whatnot. I gotta, uh, I got a full little product review video I gotta do. I'm gonna do that by itself, so yeah, might take me a little more editing tonight and uh, hopefully be back to work tomorrow. Oh boy. So please like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you guys next weekend.